Hello, you all. It's Agnes coming to you with the uh, uh, pumpkin topiary that I picked up at my uh, local thrift store. And I, of course, did not see that there was a crack. No wonder it was a dollar. But either way, so I decided to bring my spackling right here and try to, um, you know, cover all this um, cracks and all those little bumps that are there. And I'm on a mission right now to transfer this some for something that I can maybe use on my fireplace. So, of course, I had to strip uh, all the little accessories that came with my uh, pumpkin. And I have to tell you, I actually do love those colors. And I had a very hard time um, trying to um, figure out what I wanted to do. At the beginning, I thought I'm just going to embellish and put a nice stand to it. But you know what? As soon as I started to patch all of it, I knew what I wanted to do. So if you follow me for some time, you know that I'm going to be trying to bring um, some patterns, <laughs> of course. So in order to do so, I need to make sure that everything is um, covered with uh, all the paint is literally uh, covered with the chalk paint. And of course, in my case is the white color. And as you can see is, it is coming along, but I know that I would have to do a couple coats. It's like first time ever, I have a hard time, uh, you know, covering the colors because I, I actually truly like those colors. But uh, again, you know, it's time to change. So I'm just going to cover most likely with the couple of coats, make sure that I do have a nice base to it. And of course, the, the brainstorming was here. Do I bring the pattern? Do I bring the texture? Do I decoupage? And I know that I'm going to be doing many more of them because I've actually picked a couple uh, mini ones like that from my local uh, pharmacy believe it or not so i know that i'm going to be doing so many versions um, of that so here we go all is covered and i do wanted to see if i can make actually the fourth one up top so i do have the two dollar three pumpkins and of course i need to look for the ones that have the the base um you know the softer one that i can poke through the actual stem on my topiary so i removed the uh, flower and it seems like well, it's a perfect shape, but I do not know um, size-wise if I do like it. So let's try with another one that I, I don't know where I got it from, I think Walmart. So I'm going to just poke the hole and see if I'm going to put it on it. Well, I do like it that too. Huh, it's going to be a hard decision. I know that the Dollar Tree pumpkin made out of uh, ceramic, it's not going to work because it did not have opening so i decided even though they're on the lighter side i decided to simply quickly cover both of them with the uh, chalk paint to have exactly the same base and see what i can do and i'm on a mission right now to literally challenge myself and uh, and see what i can possibly do because you know mixing patterns it's 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 a little bit confusing here and there sometimes it just seems like it's too much but i actually pulled out a couple of the pictures to see how i can possibly mix them my way so here we go it's all painted now now it's time to start to plan what are we going to do so obviously for this portion i decided to the bottom portion of my topiary i decided to do the courtly check so i'm just um sketching it all around completely not measuring trying to make sure that i do have one running across so it's visible because obviously this is going to be in some kind of a container so whatever it's visible um, on the bottom one is going to be in the middle so i'm just tracing it all around and notice that when i do that i don't make the straight lines plus it's impossible to make them straight because the pumpkin is bumpy and it has additional mini um, uh, sections inside each section so i am actually trying to make my lines on the angle so they look like you know they are full even though they are 3d but i feel instead of making them straight they always uh, look uh, good when they have that little angle so now i'm marking all off because again there's so many sections to a sections so whatever places i'm marking with the x's uh, that's the places i am going to paint so i think i do have it to tell you the truth i have no idea what am i going to do with the second one but let's just feel how see how that feels so of course i'm taking my zen brushes 
and you know you have to find yourself um which one you wanted to use i actually do like the one that has the little angle on the side but um to make my lines straight but seeing that's much better but i'm still afraid um you know about the side so i know i'm going to be going back um to each of those squares later to make sure that i do have them um, sort of as as close to perfection as possible because this one is going to be visible so the trick to it is to first outline the outside of your uh, of your um, shape and then simply fill it in with the paint on the inside it's much easier so i'm not going to hold you through this whole process because obviously you know i've shown so i'm going to most likely show one more and that's it see and then when it comes to the corners I'm going to deal with it later. Plus, as I always tell you, there are additional steps that you can take to make your checks look a little bit better. So, um, but stay tuned. We're going to be going through the one by one step of that. Wonder what do you think? What should be my second pumpkin? I mean, I was debating to go with the uh, decoupage, but you know what? I went for the stripes because I actually do love them. So again, there is really no need to mark them off with the pencil, but I was just trying to, um, you know, get help myself a little bit and um, and mark them off to make sure that I do have all my lines uh, marked so I know where to go with my um, uh, paint. And again, you could go with a different color, and I was actually debating to use a different color than black, but you know what, I just went with black because as I was working on it, I'm thinking the, the embellishments are going to bring the color. Plus, all the sheen that we're going to add and all those other uh, um, things, I think it's better go with black. So notice, this one is pretty fast. You just go a straight line right to the side, two of them, and the same thing as I did with the squares. First do it on the other edges and then just fill it up with your uh, paint. And I know there's going to be, again, a little bit touch-ups here and there, but look how fast the, uh, the stripes are going. So I, again, I'm not going to hold you to it, and now let's plan the third portion of it. So the third one, I was thinking actually to do the harlequin pattern. And of course, you cannot use the template, and of course, I do wanted to do it um, uh, myself. So I decided to make the points on each section and then simply connect them right in the middle. So here we go, let's just try if I can do it. So now I'm making the points right in the middle of each section and I'm co connecting all of them. And that's what is going to be at least, I'm thinking, visible for me. So that's why um, I concentrated on a bigger portion of this pumpkin. Because you know, we are going to be most likely adding the fourth one to the top. So not much on the bottom and not much on the top of this third pumpkin uh, design and pattern wise is going to be visible. So um, that will be, um, you know, that's why I concentrate in the middle. There's no way I can use the rulers. Plus, I'm thinking that maybe even if my uh, tips um, or the corners, the edges are not at the same level. I hope that the little detail that I'm going to add at the end is going to help me even all out. So now the same thing on the bottom, on the top. And the funny thing is, as you are, as I was sketching, I've noticed that each section on the top, it has a different width. So some of my, um, you know, markings on the top are going to be smaller than the others. Plus I know when I'm going to be painting, that's going to also change too. So the bottom is super easy, just simply meeting the middle um, tip to the, um, the inside section, and that's it, that's easy. Not really worry about that one again, because it's not going to show. And I think I've got myself the Harlequin pattern right there. It's a handmade one, it's a, on a wonkier side, but I feel that that's um, what the biggest fun of it is. So here I am going to use again the Zen brush that it's on a um, smaller side and it does obviously has um, the angle to, to help me paint the lines. But uh, even though I do have the good brush, <laughs> the bumps on each uh, section is making my, pens my uh, pen, I mean paint brush, go sideways. But uh, well, we're going to get there and we're just not going to look at it right now. We're just going to correct this uh, later.
so into this uh, whole pattern and the whole hurricane that I completely forgot to turn my um, camera off. But rest assured, this is already a uh, sped up uh, motion. I am not painting that fast. <laughs> Don't don't feel that uh, you know I'm doing it so quick. Okay, so now I go to the bottom portion. It's again um, trying to fill it up. And as I was painting, that's another thing is I was thinking at the beginning, oh, I maybe paint the uh, connection in between the pumpkins with some kind of a uh, trim. But you know what? I think I have a better idea. So um, I'm not just not going to worry how they all ended on the bottom again because I feel like this is going to get covered. And if not, then I would have to go back and um, correct this. And now look what happened. See right there, as I was telling you, some of those squares are, uh, I mean, the sections are smaller. So I painted them, I did not hold you, and now it's the time to check which one I'm going to use. So here's the Dollar Tree one that had the tree, and I do have some kind of a topper. I got actually two toppers that I've painted and I actually do like this. Let's see the other one we painted white that it has that wonky shape to it. It does look good too. Man, I wish I was painting it with you last night, but guess what? Um, I just had to do it myself. As I decided to actually try the polka dots. <laughs> do you see me trying polka dots? I don't want to get embarrassed when I'm doing it by my, with you looking at me. So I took my uh, pencil and I'm going to use the, uh, the eraser portion of it like you told me to paint my dots. And of course that pumpkin had some imperfection on its own, some kind of thing. So I'm going to try to hide it. And I think I am doing a pretty good job with the shape of my polka dots. Not really happy with the placement, but you know what? It's my first time. So I have two paints, gold and black, and I'm going to, um, you know, try to um, mix those. And of course, that was that little opening that I was telling you that did not look too good. It had a little hole on the side. I don't know for some reason. So I stuck the black dot right into it. Well, not really pleased with the way my polka dots look because I should have actually had a better plan. So as I was painting them, I decided to just simply go random. And now I need to correct them because obviously um, the center of my polka dots um, are white. But you know what? It's okay. My first time. I know since I did not make a decision which um, pumpkin I'm going to use for the top, I'm going to uh, paint the other one. So hopefully the other one is going to be better. And as you can see, is I'm already making a mess. So now there's going to be a cleanup in there too. Not doing this intentionally, but you know what? Things happen. So I think I'm done. Take the pencil away from me. <laughs> no, it is fun making a polka dot, but I so need your classes from you to help me make them and, you know, uh, distance them from each other a little bit better than that. Man, I'm making a mess. I better leave this one and, you know, I'm going to correct this later. So let's move on to another pumpkin. See, I listen to myself. <laughs> I have so much cleaning to do that one that is so big. So this one, I think I learned. So I'm going to put my gold dots every other one. But I do not want them to be predictable. But either way, I'm making them predictable. I guess that's what I make me feel uh, better. So just make sure, let me know what will be the way you would have painted those um, polka dots on those two pumpkins. Um, this one seems to be a little bit uh, better, but it's again, uh, it's very predictable and I do not like this. So here we go. Now I have to clean it up because I most likely put this on a, some kind of a gold spot or had my thing on my fingers. So, um, okay, so now let's continue with the, uh, the black ones and I almost used the gold one. Here we go. So now I'm going to put it in between um, and keep the spaces right on it. And I think I'm doing a little bit better job with the second polka dots. This is what happens when you overthink um, m making things. And it's supposed to be, uh, of course, I was going to being very random, not be being from random to unrandom. And again, take away the, the, uh, the razor from me. <laughs> okay, so now we are at the point where we need to add some uh, details to um, the gold details uh, to our pumpkin because it's all dry. 
So I decided to add a little polka dots again in between the connections where my um, where my harlequin, my squares, diagonal squares are. So um, at the beginning, I was thinking I'm going to use the eraser again, as I did with the pumpkin before, but I thought that those uh, dots would have been too big. So I took the paintbrush and it's again, I remember you were the one telling me what should I use to make those. So I could have actually bring the Q-tips because I remember you telling me about it. So I've done those and now I'm adding the highlights all around the edges. And that's where I was telling you earlier, this is where everything is uh, imperfections are being hidden. That gold has a magic touch that just completely hides some of the wonky lines. And notice I'm adding it almost on every section, but not all the way, not the same uh, shading. Just in some areas, it's very strong gold. Some areas is barely there. I do not like this again. Everything that I do, I do not want it to be uh, predictable. Me, you know, adding this gold to um, any projects that I do with the Mackenzie Child is actually super rewarding because like all of a sudden your project starting to look much better and brings that depth because, you know, the black and white, uh, um, the uh, um, contrast is strong. So now I do wanted to bring a little bit of my white uh, acrylic paint and I'm going to make a little highlights right on my black uh, portion, um, you know, sections that whatever I was painting. And again, they are placed randomly. Some of them are on the whole length of uh, actual painted black. Some of them are just only on the corner. Some will not even have. So I feel like all of a sudden this starts to um, have that little depth to it. I think at least in my eyes, I just cannot wait to finally start to put the um, final touches to it to see if the vision that I was, you know, trying to achieve here is coming um, together. Okay, the highlights are done and I think I made a decision. I'm going to use the one from the Dollar Tree that had the flower on it, the one that I was learning to make by my, my polka dots, even though they are not perfect. But you know what? The whole top here is not perfect. So you know what? I'll just go with it. And I know I'm going to use that other wonky pumpkin with the polka dots for something else. So a lot of the hot glue, a lot of the pressure, a lot of, you know, I've added the E6000 that I forgot to um, show you the pictures of. And now it's time to do the embellishments. I was thinking at the beginning, I'm going to use my molds. But then I said, look how pretty the little um, inexpensive Dollar Tree goldish that they are actually waxed. So they are not as gold as they come from the store. Um, so I decided to simply wrap those um, around each section and then maybe bring something else to it because the, uh, the molds were actually too big and then it would have compete with this whole pattern. Most likely would have been good too, but you know what? I was, here we go. But I don't think I'm going to use the gold on the top. I think that the top I'm going to leave maybe with pearls. Look how nicely the little tiny pearls look in there too. Again, I'm just only wrapping, starting with a little bit of the hot glue and ending with a little bit of the hot glue. Not using it all around because I'm going to be still staring at it to see if I maybe add some gold leaves later. Do not know. I just wanted to finish and enjoy and see what else I can improve. Most of my project that I worked on takes a little while to um, to finally get to where I want it. So this project was actually done uh, last night um, and I, it was meant to be done with you. But I just had to, um, you know, keep myself busy since my daughter was out. As you can see, I added the topper. This is going to be my stem. And now I'm trying to see if I could add that gold uh, piece to it, the, the gold chain. And I ended up adding the little of the pearls to it since this um, topper already has a gold to it. So now I need to figure out what do I add on the first one? I mean, on the second one. So I guess I'm going to continue with whatever I've done on the top, that means I am going to only for now add the tiny string of pearls um, right there. And of course, I did not uh, paint with you the top of this since I already have 
a lot, lots of them are painted just for my project around the house. So I mean, maybe at some point I will, will paint that together. But either way, it's all done for now. Um, and I'm going to think, how am I going to display it now? Look how awesome this looks. But before we're going to display it, I'm going to let make sure that uh, my um, everything dries. And it seems like my tall terracotta pot is going to be a perfect um, container for my tapiri. So it's again, I go back and I'm going to paint my um, terracotta container with the chalk paint. It take me for sure a couple of the coats to paint this and then of course seal it but in the meantime why don't we just seal uh the topiary we just made so i'm using the triple tech and i do want it to bring the sheen of course look look what happens like right away my um i think that was ceramic one but like a glazed ceramic without no sheen all of a sudden everything seems looks like um it has a extremely high gloss um, I just love this product. So the tip to this is um, you do need to use the soft brush to uh, make sure that the streaks, because it's very thick, are not showing. Plus, um, you do need to distribute this whole product evenly throughout the whole surface you're applying to, because when it dries, it dries on the yellow side. So you do not want to have a yellow streaks, even though we do have some gold on it but i promise it does not look good so it, it takes a little while so i'm going sections by sections uh trying to dry all of them and of course it it does take a good 20 minutes of the amount of the um triple tick applied for it to dry and i know i will be still applying that later um when all dries but in the meantime as that drying why don't we just figure out what we're going to do with this one so um, I could have actually decoupaged it on it, so, but this time I decided to go simply uh, plain and paint my um, stripes in a completely different color. And of course, I need to mark all of them out and make sure that I do have um, the even amount of um, sections right there. Since this container is going to be my, um, I guess, temporary one for now, I'm just, again, as I said, I'm going to look at it. I decided to quickly paint the stripes with the gold paint. Just make it easy and then make the rim uh, a solid gold. I could have actually make a different color. But um, as I said, I'm not going to glue anything. I'm just going to paint and see um, how um, all is going to look um, together. So now one stripe is painted. Now I'm going to paint the trim all around it. And of course, again, it's going to be a couple of coats because uh, that paint is metallic. So you do want to have a nice finish to it. So now I was thinking, how am I going to place it? So I brought the, um, the centerpiece I made with you. And I actually do like a little bit of the greenery right on the bottom. I'm not positive about that little gold and flowers, but you know what? Here we go. I've added some spiders and it's 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 just it's fun. So here is my topiary right now standing for now at the fireplace so I can see it a little bit better. I've added some gold spiders from the Dollar Tree um, and I am looking. I actually removed the flowers from my centerpiece only left the green portion and the pumpkins. They were right on it. So it's again, this is the project that I was occupying myself last night. Um, and I really hope that you did enjoy this whole painting. And look at, I even took it outside to grab some pictures. Um, to <laughs> look how pretty. It literally so enchanted, so regal um, outside. So I know that because of that varnish, it can actually be on my patio, but we will see. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope that I inspired you um, to take any random, even broken pieces, and put them to a fun use. And if you did enjoy it, uh, please don't forget to spread news that there is a super cool project out here. And it's again, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.